Hi, it's Patrick Hutzel here again from IntensiveCareHotline.com with another episode of Your Questions Answered. This week, Damien from Auckland in New Zealand is writing in. My 73-year-old mother has been in intensive care for more than six weeks now. Initially, she was admitted for open-heart surgery, which didn't go as planned, as she was bleeding heavily after surgery and she had to go back to theatre to get the bleeding stopped. Furthermore, in the next few days after surgery, she developed an infection on her chest and she therefore had difficulties getting off the ventilator. She then failed a couple of attempts to have the breathing tube taken out with the result that after the second failed attempt, she ended up having a tracheostomy. Initially, she was getting better, but within the last few weeks, she has been really struggling as she is still having difficulties getting off the ventilator despite the intensive care team initially saying that a tracheostomy would be a much easier way to wean her off the ventilator. Unfortunately, my mother has been getting increasingly distressed and depressed in the last couple of weeks as she hasn't been sleeping at night due to the poor quality of life in intensive care. She also hasn't managed to stay off the ventilator for long periods of time. Furthermore, she also suffers from the lack of privacy and the lack of dignity in the sterile hospital environment. My question is, what can we, my siblings and I, do to help her getting better and how can we, make, can we also make sure she's getting the best possible care? Dear Damien, thanks for your question. You're bringing up some very important questions in your email. You see, with your mother being a long-term ventilated patient with tracheostomy in intensive care, there are several issues that come with it. As you have already correctly identified, she has no or little quality of life in a sterile clinical environment and she certainly has no or very little privacy and very little dignity. Furthermore, it sounds like she's really struggling to get off the ventilator and with the issues that you've pointed out, such as being distressed and depressed, your mother might have a hard time to get off the ventilator and it might be a lengthy and burdensome process. What I have seen over the years in intensive care is that when it comes to long-term ventilation with tracheostomy, patients, more often than not, enter into a vicious cycle and the long-term stay in intensive care triggers depression and the depression triggers the ventilator dependency. As I think that half of the battle your mother is fighting is a psychological dependency on the ventilator. Because she already had two failed attempts to be taken off the ventilator, she has experienced the struggles and the hardship that come with the ventilator dependency already, and she's probably afraid and worried that she won't come off the ventilator and get out of intensive care. Another issue that, may, that you may not be aware of is that the longer your mother stays in intensive care, the longer she may need to get off the ventilator. It's a vicious cycle, as I said. And moreover, the risk of catching a hospital-acquired infection is increasing as well, as there are a lot of bugs floating around in intensive care, increasing the risk for your mother that she's catching an infection. The lack of natural daylight, the sleeplessness and the disturbed day and night rhythm are only contributing to make things worse for your mother. In order to give you some action steps what you can do to improve your mother's situation, I suggest ask whether your mother can be transferred to a room with natural daylight. Also ask whether your mother can have regular and experienced nurses looking after her. Often intensive care units tend to have less experienced or junior nurses or even agency nurses looking after long-term patients and the more experienced and the senior staff are looking after new admissions. Therefore, consistency of care with regular and experienced nurses would be a bonus for your mother. Also ask whether your mother can have regular visits outside the ICU to get fresh air and natural daylight. This is something that can be done if the staff want to, so don't be afraid to ask. Also, make sure your mother is getting regular showers or baths, as this usually improves well-being too. Also, bring in your mother's favorite music, favorite pictures, smells that remind her of home, etc. Basically, anything that reminds her of her own home and familiar environment would be a bonus. Furthermore, ask around in your community and find out whether there are any intensive home care nursing services that are specialized to take long-term ventilated patients out of intensive care, back into their own home, as a genuine alternative to a long-term stay in intensive care. I bet your mother will blossom if she can go home. 
Whilst this may not be an option in your area, you can still check out such services that are available in countries such as Australia or Germany. I've put a few links to those websites below. Also, learn to ask the right questions to the intensive care team and look for things that can be improved. You can discover a ton of free information and what you need to know in our free reports and I have sent you our free report, six answers to the six most frequently asked questions if your loved one requires ongoing mechanical ventilation with tracheostomy in intensive care, where you find comprehensive answers to most of the challenges that you and your mother are facing. If you are reading this and you are in a similar situation and you also want our free report, please email support at intensivecarehotline.com or simply send your questions and we can answer your question here in this forum. Furthermore, what you can also do is read our free instant impact report. With this free instant impact report, you can immediately improve your and your family's life whilst your loved one is critically, critically ill in intensive care. In this free report, you'll discover how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions, how to eliminate fear, frustration, stress, struggle and vulnerability. You get five killer tips and strategies helping you to get on the right path to control power and influence in your situation. You'll also get critical behind the scenes insights so that you understand what is really happening in intensive care. With our free instant impact report, you'll also get four other free reports that will help you stay in control, take, take power and influence decision making. And in those free reports are seven answers to the seven most frequently asked questions if your loved one is a critically ill patient in intensive care, nine myths of being a critically ill patient in intensive care, six questions you need to ask the most senior doctor in intensive care if your loved one is critically ill in intensive care, and the last report is 10 things doctors and nurses are talking about if your loved one is critically ill in intensive care when you and your family are not present at the bedside. So sign up with your email below and I'll send you those reports straight away. Thank you for watching this week your questions answered forum and send us your questions to support at intensivecarehotline.com and I'll see you again next week with another question answered. This is Patrick Hutzel at intensivecarehotline.com. Thank you.